going to present our work on evaluation of surgical outcomes of 360 degree goniotomy in primary congenital glaucoma. So primary congenital glaucoma, it accounts for 0.01 to 0.04 percent of the total blindness worldwide and the definitive surgical management options are goniotomy, trabeculectomy and combined trabeculotomy and trabeculectomy. Now goniotomy is preferred to other surgical op procedures, why? Because it is minimally invasive, it spares the conjunctiva and though there is no bleb related complication, also it is cost effective. So the traditionally angled surgeries which have been described, they open up around one third of the angle in one, pr in one step. So multiple steps might be needed to open up the entire angle. So we perform this prospective analysis on the uh, 360 degree goniotomy. Now infants who presented to our congenital glau glaucoma clinic, they were screened and 52 eyes of 32 patients were included who were uh, having primary congenital glaucoma of uh, age less than two years and having a good corneal clarity which permits us to see the angle and perform the procedure. Now patients with dense haze, uh, secondary glaucoma, patients who were not willing to give consent and age criteria, they were excluded. Now the th 360 degree goniotomy is performed, here we can see uh, that uh, with the 24 gauge bent uh, needle uh, goniotomy, nasal goniotomy is being performed and as we can see through the lens that there is uh, as we are opening up the angle there is falling back of the iris. Now we shift the po position to the other side and now we perform the temporal goniotomy following which the uh, irrigation aspiration is done and the ports were hydrated and sutured. So now we can see the goniotomic view of the angle in the children before uh, performing the uh, uh, goniotomy. There we can see that now there now is now anterior now. insertion of the iris and post goniotomy we can see that there is falling back of the iris with opening of the cleft. Now these children were followed uh, for a period of 12 months every every three monthly and the intraocular pressure and the number of anti-glaucoma medications were recorded in each follow-up. Success criteria was defined as absolute success with IOP less than 18 millimeter of mercury or no medication and qualified or IOP less than 18 with on or on less than equal to two anti-glaucoma medications. Now coming to the results, <laughs> here we see there is a table uh, showing the pre-op and the post-op IOP, uh, post-op at three months, six months, nine months and 12 months. We can see that there is a significant reduction in the IOP and the mean IOP decreased at 12 months with a significant p-value. Also the number of anti-glaucoma medication has also significantly reduced at 12 months follow-up. Baseline characteristics at the pre-op were also recorded such as the age at presentation, the intraocular pressure, axial and corneal diameter, anti-glaucoma medication, the cup to disc ratio were also recorded. Here we can see there is a chart which shows the anti-glaucoma medication and the intraocular pressure. This uh, bar graph shows the anti-glaucoma medication. We can see that there is significant reduction and it stabilizes at around 12 months. Also the intraocular pressure follows the same trend from the pre-op and the post-op 12 months. Now we try to find out any correlation between the pre-op IOP and the cupping and axillin. However, no significant correlation was found. The forest plot shows the same. Now we found the success rate. Uh, the for complete success rate was 40% and qualified 48, bringing to a total success rate of 88%. kaplan meier survival analysis was also plotted and it shows that there is a stability in the curve at 12 months of more than 75% survival rate. Now additional surgery was required only 9.61% eyes where trabeculectomy was performed and complications was uh, seen in 19.23% of eyes which is high, which was tri transient hyphema and it was, it was managed conservatively well. Now why goniotomy? Because it is a conjunctiva sparing surgery, shorter duration of surgery and post-op recovery, it has lesser complication, also cost effective. Then why 360 degree goniotomy? Because the aqueous outflow is not symmetrical. So we, uh, we perform 360 degree goniotomy and open up the entire angle and there also we can avoid the need for multiple anesthesia and reduce the parental stress and cost effective in a country like ours. So why not other procedures? So there were there are studies which have compared like 360 degree trabeculotomy uh, versus the uh, <laughs> partial trabeculotomy. They have also shown good result but there is an additional cost of the microcatheter. Why not trabeculectomy? Trabeculectomy has manipulation of the conjunctiva, there is use of anti-metabolites, so it can lead to bleb related complications and vision threatening complications. This leaves a very small window for performing further intervention. These are various studies which have shown the, uh, which has supports the documentaries. Finally, I would like to conclude with saying that patients with pediatric glaucoma is a challenging case and it requires multiple surgical procedures. So if we perform goniotomy and our study has shown that there is a significant reduction in the IOP and the anti-glaucoma medication in the 
long term. So we can perform this where entire angle is treated at once, and this also buys us time for further surgical interventions if it is needed, and also better for the parents and the children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very nice study. So just uh, we need a clear cornea. You are saying, no? Yes, ma'am. That means most of these cases will not be the very severe cases who have uh, no. moderate glaucoma. Yes, yes, which we usually see in this country. Yes, ma'am. So clear enough so that yes, ma'am. So that we can see the angle and perform the procedure. Yes, ma'am. Goniatomy has been around for maybe 50 years. Yes, sir. So, uh, what is new in your study? Sir, in our study, goniotomy has been new, but those are traditional surgeries which were, they performed only around like the partial procedure, like around one third of the angle they opened up. But in our surgery, we tried to perform 360 hmm. degree goniotomy where we can open up the entire angle, sir. So, we can do it in one go only. was the observer error ruled out for all the measurements over all these time points? Ma'am, single it? observer. For all the measurements, yes. all the time. Yes, ma'am. Single okay. observer. I formed the in evaluation under anesthesia and we ensured that for those patients, the single observer okay. is done. And what anesthesia? Ma'am? Which anesthesia? Ma'am, hello. Uh, in inhalational anesthesia was used, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank Dr. Ekta.